Well, the ball game. The ball game. So the ball game, who has to leave at the end of the eighth? Morgan. When does the game get good? At night. Who's at home? Morgan. Or on the subway or somewhere. Well, I saw eight innings today, Sam. Yeah. I see the bums play the bigger bums. Good game, though, what I've seen of it. Very good game. Hello, Daniel. How's your leg? No reaction, huh? Just walking, huh? Any running yet? Hit it with a doctor's uh, clopper there. One of those, uh, you know, they sock the nerve, and if you don't react, you don't go to the ball game. Oh, great, great. Ed Head is a good... Who? Dickie James, say goodbye? Where did he, where'd he go? Yeah, I know. He went to wait. Uh, I, I can't tell where he went. Um, uh, I'm sorry I missed him. Good game. That Ed Head's a good pitcher. Ed Head's a good pitcher. Well, so final score, 4-2. to two. Brooklyn win. So it's all right. I mean, but I'd like to be there when it happens. Hey, Sam. Uh, very good program we got here tonight. Uh, circus program. Circus program, Sam. You start. You start. I don't take a bite of Sam. Bring Dick back. Uh, hurry, 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 hurry on the inside. Uh, hurry, hurry, hurry. Good evening, anybody. Here's Morgan, butcher, baker, candlestick maker, relayer of messages from the boot maker, data referred to as A D L E R. Uh, this evening marks the beginning of Greater Deep in the Heart of Texas Week. And our giant combination diving bell and radio studio is gaily festooned with colorful bits of tumbling tumbleweed, several pictures of Gene Autry's horse in full color, and 8,000 Zeke Manners recordings, all of which have plenty or nothing to do with Texas. And now I think, if you're all ready, we can play radio's thrilling new game, Catch as Catch Can, Fred Waring. We just made it up, sitting behind third in the bright sun. Line up on one side of the studio are the song pluggers, some of whom have come to us especially and from as far away as the 47th Street Automat. While on the other side of the studio is Fred Waring himself, dressed to resemble a huge pack of Dash cigarettes. With the Dash cigarette girls of the week dancing around him in their slick AVS, AWVS uniforms, all trying to look like Joan Bennett. Now, when the whistle blows, the song pluggers will rush Mr. Waring and the first successfully to handcuff the eminent band leader will receive the plug which has been loaned to us for this occasion by Harry Von Zell. And maybe his tune will lead the... Now, uh, we come to the head and shoulders of the program itself. I was a 97-pound weakling. Of course, I was only eight years old. Then I read the life of the Moreland sisters through the courtesy of Super Magician Magazine, and sent a little note to Charlie Atlas. The story of these two brave girls gave me courage, and their smiling happy faces seemed to be saying to me, go on, Henry, you can be a press digitator. Try. So I threw caution to the winds and plunged into my work. That ought to be a soft go. For the first year, I got nothing but squirrels out of my silk hats. Then it developed rabbits, and now, well, everybody knows the rest. <laughs> that's a, that's, you know how it is. Twice a day now, I pull Ted Lewis out of the silk hat to loud plaudits. Yes, I owe it all to the Moylan sisters, and so do you. So does everybody. I would like to introduce you to Sam, who owes his success to clean living. Clean living and records. Now I want you to hear the all over in the orchestra from the low E flat on the trombone right through to the bassoon, clarinet, flute to the high E flat on the piccolo. They swam all over the dance. Now we come to the fish music. The water music that the fishes swim over played in the orchestra on the harp. <laughs> 
Very effective on the house. Now we come to the well-known theme of boop, boop, didum, dadum, wadum, chew, with the accent on the chew. This again is portrayed on the horn, H-O-R-N-S, only in harmony instead of in unison. It rather reminds one of Wagner. <laughs> the martial movement, Allegro con Fuoco, which means with fire. Here it is, played on the brass. Alex Templeton, one of the greatest entertainers of our day. Cleverest satirists and greatest mimics and most inventive and uh, and uh, uh, I'm going to make myself a million dollars. I'm going to set up what is to be known as the Morgan Clothing Clinic. Uh, I'm attending a cocktail party, and I'm being introduced to a young doctor. In the course of the conversation with this party, I find out he's been experimenting with grafting. See? So I make them a joke like Tammany Hall, politicians. But the young doctor gives me the fish eye. And all of a sudden, the inspiration comes to me from out of the blue. Grafting, I says to myself. Why not grafting lapels and cuffs on victory suits? Inspirational. So right away, I get this doc's name on a contract. He's going to wait for me, and we're all set to go. You follow me? We got this clinic with tailors and fitters and everything. All you do is come to us with your victory suit. We make it look like pre-war. Only sometimes even better. Like last week, for instance, already we put fur collars four collars and a cuffs on a regular business suit. A masterpiece, I says to the doc. I give him a bonus aside from the conditions of the contract. And he replies, it's a new era in the clothing business is dawning. The doc is very careful with the patients, of course. Each and every gentleman that comes to us got to be studied. We match the cloth with a blood test. Then the doc cuts off an old lapel with a scalpel and he matches it to the victory suit. And the instrument nurse, a tailor named Mo, hands him the needle and a thread. Then they suture around a little, and before you know it, the lapel is back on. Then the patient goes away and rests. He rests for a week, maybe. And uh, then he comes back, they put the second operation on him. They, they can, it's the second operation, they put the cuffs on the pants. Local anesthesia, that's all. Sometimes even it's so perfected now the doc don't have to be there. One of his assistants, intern named Izzy, he does most of the cuff work. Both operations completely give the patient the bill. If he faints, they put him in the hospital next door. We own that one, too. Why don't you come on over have a couple of lapels sutured? How about it? Anything wrong with your feet? Need some Adler shoes or anything? Need some new shoes? Adler? 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 Adler, the one-minute commercial with five highly trained announcers all screaming at once. My friend says, what has Adler got that any other shoe store has not? Well, he has me to sell shoes. Secondly, Adler has elevators, shoes that make men almost two inches taller in standard. It has a complete assortment of styles, sizes, leathers, and colors in every type of shoe. There isn't, a, there isn't a normal man in New York. He can't fit perfectly right out of stock. Except maybe the guy in the Andy Gump strip in the news, the guy with the two left feet. How are you, Hogan? Is that a new suit? A lot better than the other one. New shoes? Adler shoes? I get your rate, kid. Get you 1% off. Well, what with taxes it put back on? You know about Adler's long fellow, Hogan? You're a big kid. You're six feet or over and you have big feet? These are swanky shoes. Make your feet look smaller. But they're comfortable. Nothing squeaks. Nothing bites. You're happy. You sing. <laughs> You're nuts. Just go in and buy the shoes and walk out and keep your mouth shut. A-D-L-E-R. Of course, he makes the thin man, too, for thin meat. Thin feet. Thin meat. That's that new maid I have up the house. Slices off the bottom half of nothing and parboils it. Adler's shoes come in widths E to 6E. 
that is the wide guy shoes do. Any kind of foot you have, son, bringing in old man Adler, who still spells his name A-D-L-E-R, bring a little dough with you, not an awful lot, you get a pair of shoes. And uh, good shoes, good shoes. He still had a lot of rubber sole shoes, a lot of rubbers, uh, made before BP, I guess, before priorities. And uh, better get around there, though, if you want rubber sole shoes. Mr. Adler uh, has no more resources in this line. 20 ADLER stores in the metropolitan area. 20. Sam? Sam? Whoa! <laughs> Circus by Henry Morgan, PS 142, Class 5B, Teacher Miss Apple The circus is something that comes to Madison Square Garden once a year and blocks off traffic on Saturday afternoon. And it's a place where the clown is in love with a bareback rider, but she doesn't love him, so he's crying while he's laughing, which is the neatest trick of medical history. Now, stepping into the sideshow, we see the freaks. There's the man who eats razor blades. Getting thinner, isn't he? Hmm. Down to one blade a week. WPB. Moving on, we arrive in front of the ambassadors from Mars. Orson Welles is deep in conversation with one of them. Later on, we pass Orson Welles again, this time in deep conversation with Orson Welles. Harry, Harry, Harry. Ah, Harry, Harry. This way, the one and only, the eighth one of the world. He astounds you, amazes you, makes you shudder. Yet stimulates and surprises you, the India Rubber Man. This year, the India Rubber Man has a routine. He stretches his neck and he says, Hey, look at me, I'm priceless. Priceless. He makes everybody who owns a car jealous by twisting himself into a brand new automobile tire with white walls. What better? Harry, Harry, step this way. Don't crowd. Let the folks get... Thank you, lady. In this cage, ladies and gentlemen, we have the premier attraction of the 1942 Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey Circus. Mr. and Mrs. Gargantua. The only couple in the animal kingdom that has no domestic trouble. Rumor has it they were married by a justice of the peace in Tanganyika. Went to Victoria Falls on their honeymoon. And now we take a seat in the arena. The glamour of the sawdust show is in the air, and pretty soon the grand march will begin. So hurry, 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 hurry. It's the greatest show on earth. Hear that, Jim? There won't be any more new cars this year. We must take mighty good care of the cars we have. You can with Shell Dealer's new ground crew service. Mm, what's that? A new Shell Dealer service created just for this emergency. It's patterned after Army Air Corps standards. Well, what's it cover? The Shell Dealer who displays the ground crew service emblem thorough checks oil, tires, lights, radiator, battery, cleans windshield, rear window, all absolutely free. And if your car needs lubrication, he gives the right kind. Say, that's just what I want. Get free ground crew service regularly. At the famous sign of the shell. Vatican will be on the same corner in front of the cigar store again tomorrow night at the same time. And I want you to know that it's... What's that, madam? Uh... Do Mr. and Mrs. Gargantua have any social life? Well, yes, in a way. They uh, they have an explorer for dinner every now and then. This is the Mutual <laughs> Broadcasting System.